We are at the ATD 2019, and my first interview is Carla Torgerson, the author of the book The Microlearning Guide to Microlearning, and we'll talk about the effective microlearning. I'm Wagner Casimiro, in this is the Espresso Tree. Hi, Carla. Hi, how are you, Wagner? Yeah. What are the ways that we can use the microlearning? Well, I think the, um, there's four main ways to use microlearning. If we think about um, supporting longer form instruction, say classroom instruction, we can use microlearning either before as a form of pre-work, or we can use it afterwards, and we sometimes call that boost learning, support and reinforcement after a classroom event. Um, the other two ways are to have either standalone microlearning, just lessons that are short all by themselves, or to have performance support, which is that after they have learned or after they're using this material, that you are supporting them while they're on the job. To have the learning in the workflow. Yes, exactly, right in the workflow. So is it possible to use microlearning for everything? I would say no. I think, um, you know, I often say I don't want to go to a doctor who only studied at the microlearning school of medicine, <laughs> right? Good answer. I want, yeah, right? I want um, microlearning to be used when it fits best. And there are a number of times when, when it will fit best, right? So one good, good example is compliance training, right? A lot of people don't actually want to have to take compliance training. So what if we made it shorter for them? Give them just a little bit. Or instead of one hour of training once a year, what if we did just five minutes once a month, right? So that's a really good example of a spot where microlearning fits well. So another one would be, um, in addition, if it's something that people forget easily, right? Let's offer them some performance support to enable them to remember it. Or if it's difficult when they're using it on the job, right? Um, and then the other one that I like to think of is if the learner is either very, very interested in your content or the opposite. So if they're really, really interested in your content, you can offer informal learning, right? Stuff that's not required, right? Um, but on the flip side, if there's that class or content that, that I like to think of as just the stuff nobody wants to take, right? Um, well, instead of forcing them to take a lot of it all at once and you know they're gonna tune out and they're not gonna consume it well, what if you offer them little tiny bits along the way? I like to think of it with my son. I often say, you know, just take two bites of vegetables. Don't eat the whole plate, right? Um, and I think the same is true for learning. A good strategy. I'll try it with mine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> my last question is, uh, could you share some tips uh, for someone who has this intention to implement microlearning? Yeah, so if you want to do microlearning resources really well, I think the first thing you need to do is be very specific. So really think about that content and get it down to something really narrowly focused. And then within that, be performance focused. So if, if I'm going to create a piece of microlearning for you, what is it that you're going to want to do because you're consuming that content, right? And we say that with learning uh, materials all the time, but I think it's even more prevalent with microlearning because it's small stuff that I want to consume quickly and get back to work. So make sure it's focused on performance. Um, then you'll want to also be brief. Whatever you've decided is so specifically narrowly focused and it's related to your performance, how do you tell it to me in a way that's super brief? Don't go on and on and on, right? Just tell me what I need to know to get me back on to what I need to do. And the fourth one is just be really engaging. You know, nobody wants to take learning content that's boring, right? And, and the more engaging we are, the more we know people will retain it. They will learn from that. And so if it's really engaging, that will help. And then the last one for me is really dear to my heart is to be learner focused. Ask yourself what the learner would want, right? If that's what they would find helpful and useful and in a format that they would be able to consume well and in a duration that would be helpful to them, then I think you win, right? And so really think about the learner and the use case and what really is the thing that they need most at that moment. Okay, thank you, Carla. And if you want to find more information regarding microlearning, I suggest you to find this book at your bookstore. Thank you.